Okay, today we're going to learn about what a thing called the chain rule, which is a rule for taking derivatives. And we use the chain rule when we deal with things of the composition of functions. And so let's take a moment and think about the composition of functions. We know that f g, or we know rather that g is inside of f when it's written as such. And so when we look at all these examples here, there are functions inside of functions. And this first example is just starting to recognize the functions inside of functions. So if I look at this first one, I know that I can see that x cubed minus 2x squared, that is a function, that is my g of x, is equal to x cubed minus 2x squared. Whereas my f of x is the x squared. The g is inside of the x squared, so f of x is just x squared, because that is inside for x, and that's how the composition comes apart. Looking at b part, g of x, the inside function, well, x squared is inside my f function, which is cosine x. And then if I go to c part, this one before I do that one, let's think about how, how um, we write trigs with exponents. This is exactly the same thing as saying cosine of x squared. And when we see it as such, then it's easier to see that the g of x is simply cosine of x, and f of x is equal to the x squared, because the cosine x is inside is being squared. On b part, x squared was inside the cosine function. Okay, so um, you should pause the video now and try d, e, and f on your own. And magically, when you turn the video back on, the answers will appear. Okay, so now that we're back, you should actually check to see if you were right for your answers. Pause it now, check and see if you're right. If you are right, great, move on. If you aren't right, take a moment and reflect upon where your mistakes were and how you could have improved. And uh, when you're ready, we'll continue on. Okay, the next example is we're asked to calculate the derivative of f of x, or I have the f of x is equal to this great big giant function. Well, up to this part, if we were going to find the derivative, I would have to expand all of this out to the power of 5, which would be a complete messy nightmare. But now, with the chain rule, we can use the chain rule to do it. And here's how the chain rule is defined. If we have, if h of x is a composition of g inside of f, so f of g, then I know the derivative is going to be the derivative of the outside function, so derivative of f times the derivative of the inside function. Or, if y equals f of u and u equals g of, g of x, then if I'm going to find the derivative, it's going to be the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. This is the same as this in function notation. If we look at what our formula book says, this is how the formula book actually writes it. It writes it in this way, but it means exactly the same as f prime of g times g prime of x. All right, so using this rule, we are going to find the derivative. And so my inside function is x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1, and my outside function is to the power of 5. And so when I take the derivative, I do the derivative of the outside function, which is this. So that is 5, and the 4 comes down. But g stays the same, which is x cubed plus 2x squared plus 1, times the derivative of the inside function. Well, that's 3x squared plus 4x plus 0. This is the derivative. We're not going to expand it. We're just going to practice taking the derivative today. So we take the derivative of the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. Let's try another example. So here, the inside function is x squared plus 1 and the square root is the outside function. So if I'm going to take the derivative 
Well, actually, I'm first going to rewrite this as x squared plus 1 to the power of 1 half. So if I take the derivative, the 1 half comes down. The inside function remains the same. Subtract 1 from my exponent times the inside derivative is 2x. If I tidy this up a little bit, I can see that the 2's cancel. And I can get x over negative square root of x squared plus 1. And there's derivative of f. If we try g, give it a try on your own. Pause it and then see if it's the same as what I get. Okay, pause it. Okay, there we are. So taking the derivative, the derivative of cosine I know is negative sine x squared times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. And so that is my derivative. So take a moment, try these two on your own, pause the video, and when you come back, the answers will magically appear. Try these. Okay, so here are the answers. Um, I rewrote sine to be sine squared, and of interesting note, this is the identity sine 2x. You don't need to convert that, but sometimes it might be handy. And then um, here I've got the derivative of h. Make sure you've done the next one, and I'll show you the answers for the next one. Pause it if you haven't done e and f. Here are the answers to e and f. I rewrote this as to the negative one-third, and then I took the derivative from there. Be careful here, t is the variable, 4 pi is just a constant, and there you get your derivative. So, when we take the derivative of the chain rule, if it's a composition of functions, it is equal, the derivative is the derivative of the, ins, the outside function times the derivative of the inside function. And this is an important rule and enable us, enables us to solve lots and lots of derivatives.